I'm joined here by Jeremy Benami, the founder and president of J Street. Thank you for joining me, Jeremy. Thank you so much. So, we'd like to start by asking you about something you wrote in a recent op-ed for Haaretz.com. You said that if the peace talks failed, that Israel would be increasingly isolated into the international community. Uh, do you think this has happened since the peace talks ceased? Well, I think one of the things we saw, even just in a matter of days, was uh, European countries beginning to warn businesses about the potential legal ramifications of doing business in the settlements. Uh, you also saw the vote at the Presbyterian Church uh, for divestment. You will see much more of these kinds of actions around the world as the conflict continues to be a source of uh, reasoning for isolating Israel from the international community. Do you think those actions came as a result, a direct result of the breakdown in talks? Or would they happen anyway? Well, I think a lot of the actions that are being taken are a result of the ongoing occupation. It's the, it's the ongoing conflict that's the root of the problem. I think that countries and companies and groups are a lot more sympathetic to Israel and a lot less likely to take what might be perceived as steps to pressure Israel if there's an ongoing diplomatic process. But if there's no diplomacy and there's no prospect of a negotiated end to this conflict, people are going to look for other ways uh, to express their anger, frustration, uh, displeasure at what's going on. What role did you think the U.S. government had in the breakdown in talks? And do you think they needed to be a tougher uh, mediator? Well, I think there was more than enough blame to go around. Uh, and at the end, you know, the finger pointing doesn't really help in moving things forward. What does help is try to learn a little bit about what could be done better uh, if there's going to be a future round. I think one thing in particular that we've read a lot about is whether or not the United States spent enough time talking to the Palestinians. Uh, the U.S. clearly spent a lot of time negotiating with the Israelis and that's appropriate to try to figure out what the security needs are, what arrangements could be made to meet Israel's security needs, but apparently from what we are reading uh, not enough time was spent uh, doing the same thing with the Palestinians in order to ensure that when a framework and a paper emerged that it was not something that purely addressed one side's needs but but would address both sides needs and so if the reports that we're reading by your own uh, Barack Ravid uh, are correct then it seems that perhaps more time could be devoted uh, in a future round uh, to working with the Palestinians at the same time as working with the Israelis. So are you saying then that the U.S. is not a balanced uh, mediator? Well, I think it can be, and I think the only way that a mediator can be successful is to be balanced. Uh, but if in this particular case, uh, if it is true that uh, there was a whole period of time in which the negotiations were pretty much bilateral between the U.S. and Israel without fully engaging and keeping the, the other side up to speed, then perhaps we can learn something for next time about the need to do that in a slightly better way. Do you think young Jewish Americans are losing faith that the peace process could bear fruits in our time? Well, I think all people of all religions and all nationalities are losing faith in uh, a process that never achieves results. Uh, I think the, the deeper question is whether or not Jewish, younger Jewish Americans, particularly more liberal politically, uh, less orthodox, American young people are losing a sense of connection to the state of Israel, uh, to the enterprise of building a national home for the Jewish people. That's the bigger concern. I think all of us are uh, questioning a process that never produces an end, and that's natural. But the deeper and more troubling thing would be if we start to lose a connection between young American Jews and the state of Israel. What does that disconnection emerge from? Is it a result of the lack of peace? Or does it have nothing to do with that, perhaps distancing ourselves in time from the Holocaust and from other unifying Jewish experiences? What's the source of that disconnection? Well, I do think it's got multiple sources, and I wouldn't blame it purely on the lack of peace, but I do think that the identity, and again, I'm limiting my comments to less orthodox, more secular or reform or conservative, and more liberal politically American Jews. I believe that their identity as Jews is more deeply grounded in the values and the principles on which they were raised. And those values and principles in uh, some extent are 
liberal with a small L, but they view them as Jewish, and it's part of their Jewish identity to have been on the side of civil rights, to have been on the side of uh, labor unions, to be on the, fight, the side of you know, those who are being oppressed around the world. It's the disconnect between those values and the world view that they associate with being Jewish and the policies of the government of the national home of the Jewish people. That's where the disconnect comes. How can a country that is our national home uh, as Jewish people and the way we've been raised be inflicting on another people what is being seen through the occupation and through the racism and through the other actions that happen in this country uh, as a reflection of who we are as a people and that's where the disconnect uh, begins to emerge. Do you think modern anti-Semitism is expressed through anti-Israelism or are they two distinct um, phenomena? Well there was anti-Semitism long before there was an Israel so the roots of anti-Semitism without question go much much deeper than Israeli government policy today but I would argue that the ongoing occupation and the policies that are followed by this government when it comes to the Palestinian people are providing extra fuel to the fire, unnecessary extra fuel to the fire. If we can reach a two-state resolution, if we can end the occupation, if we can ensure freedom and self-determination for the Palestinian people, then there will be less of that fuel. There will still be anti-Semitism, but the flames will be lower. And what do you have to say about the recent turmoil in Israel and the fact that Haaretz is holding a peace conference at, right in the heart of Dafka. it? Dafka. Dafka, right. That's what right. I was looking for. <laughs> well, look, the uh, former Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin always used to say that you have to fight terror as if there is no effort to achieve peace. And you have to give everything to make peace as if there were no terror. And I think we're living that today. You know, the... Reserves are being called up. Yeah. The Iron Dome is being deployed. Rockets are falling. Riots in the streets. But even in a moment like this, you can't stop with the effort to find a way out peacefully to end this conflict. So I think it's appropriate. Uh, it only highlights the urgency of the work that is being done. And so I commend uh, Haaretz and proud to be a part of it. Thank you very much for joining us on Haaretz.com. Thank you.